Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of Advanced Solo Queue Statistics with me, your host and subject, Gelati. So for this month there were six compromise games. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, a compromise game is any game in which there was either severe lag, a server issue, a uh, DC either on my team or the other team, or um, personal um, computer issues. So there were six games that were compromised. Uh, I went two and four in those games. So as always, these statistics will not be included in any of the numbers you're going to see today. So uh, jumping right in. We see that I kind of stagnated. Uh, I'm pretty much, uh, I kind of hung around the, the same division and ratings that I was in last uh, for April and May. Uh, I peaked out actually a little bit higher in April and May than I did here. Uh, this has actually since changed, but you'll see that for next month. I did go 4-0 in my promo matches, which is worth noting. I think that's kind of a neat... Um, uh, every time I got demoted down to Plat 3, I was almost immediately back up within three or four games. I uh, didn't lose a single promo match. That's good. Uh, for KDA, my KDA dropped down slightly um, by about... What's that? By 0.11... Uh, and for the most part, that was mostly because I was dying a lot more. So if you look at if you look across, like I got more kills per game than I did the previous month, slightly uh, slightly fewer assists, but I died um, more as well. So the more deaths thing actually matters quite a bit. And uh, I have a suspicion as to where that came from. We'll discuss that a little bit later. Team KDA. This is just something I track for interest. It doesn't really have that much of a bearing on too many things. I had actually the same exact uh, longest winning streak as I did last month, and the same exact 8 out of 9. Uh, I did cut down on my 7 game losing streak that I had last month, I cut that down to 4, which is much more in line with where I'm usually at. Still not very good, but definitely more like it. Uh, LP gain and loss was plus 21 and minus 21. Uh, coincidentally, uh, I think my MMR has been a little bit jacked up by getting demoted and then immediately promoted a couple of different times. So we'll see if this has any long-term effect. But for the most part, it's like one or two points difference. not going to matter that much, honestly. Uh, average CS for and against. Uh, again, the, the numbers for my opponents uh, down by 12 points or 12 CS per game, which is pretty substantial, while I'm only down by about 7 CS per game, which is... You know, a slight improvement. If I can, if I can deny my opponents more, that's fine. As long as I'm not falling too far behind, it's still not good, but okay. Now, this is the more important statistic than the average CS per game, which is the the one here. the The more important one is average CS per minute. So I track this. Uh, the average CS per minute four includes my non. It's it's only for non-support games. So I compl I omit any support games from this because obviously that's gonna disrupt the figure so we see that for average cs per minute it's actually a much closer it's a pretty close number just like the average total cs but um i'm still getting out farmed is the moral of the story so uh this does bode kind of poorly considering i i pride myself on being able to farm very well and there's actually a very low number so uh, we're going to discuss later on that that's actually something I want to improve for next month to kind of uh, shore up my gold income. Highest peak kills, this is just for um, outliers mostly. Uh, 341 CS game, I believe that was on Cassiopeia, I'm not sure. Going over to combat grades, this is, uh, you know, these are the, the metrics that I've developed for myself to help kind of uh, improve and focus my my especially my mid lane play uh, my lane effectiveness uh, stayed roughly the same I was a positive 0 0.06 last month which means that very very slightly uh, I was on average winning my lane which is kind of you know 0 0.08 uh, is not really a good number it's not a bad number either obviously it's positive but uh, I should be winning my lane a lot more, especially with the lane dominant champions that I've been playing recently. Uh, outside lane influence 4 remained roughly the same, dropping 0 0.04. Uh, outside lane influence against slightly uh, higher than it was last month, but you know, not that big a difference. 
roaming effectiveness, however, was much higher. Which is, and I want to spend a second and talk about this because I didn't roam nearly as much as I did last month. But when I did, it was significantly more effective. So I think this is actually like the balance that I need to uh, that I need to find, and like I want to kind of take what I did this month for roaming and apply that to all months going forward. I'm not a roaming playmaking type of player. I'm just not. So I, I'd be kidding myself if I was to say that I'm, I'm that kind of player. So I'm much more of a, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, then I do it, but I'm not going to cr make the opportunity happen. That's just not the kind of player I am. I tend to, you know, I tend to prioritize focusing on my lane, getting my tower down or disrupting the jungler rather than um, lane ganking or like ganking bot or top. That's not something that I've, you know, I've done and I've been trying to improve that over the years. And I think I've gotten better at it. And this is like the first month that it's truly manifested itself in the number. So I've been roaming less, but when I have, it's been significantly more effective. And I think this is uh, this is kind of the the fruits of my labors there. Moving on to contribution grades. Um, these were all pretty much, uh, the positive contribution was the exact same as it was last month, but the negative contribution was significantly higher. Um, more or less, I was dying a lot. Uh, I went from a, um, a total net contribution average of positive 1.76 to a positive 0. Point, or a positive 0. Uh, 0.13. So more than a point and a half down actually more than it's like 1.6 points down 1.63 points down uh, it's pretty substantial and it's kind of interesting because if you look i had 42 positive games and 32 negative games so i i was positive more often than i was negative and that's just like i was last month i was positive more often than i was negative but in the negative games I, w I was a substantially high negative contribution score. Like it's more or less this, this breaks down to I died a lot and it ended up being a reason that my team would lose. Um, statistically speaking, maybe not within the actual game, but more or less I died a lot. That's the TLDR here. Um, opposite of what's been trending. I did actually have a positive win rate in my positive contribution games which is you know for the past three or four months has not been the case oddly enough and i had a negative record in the negative games and i think because i was so extremely toward the negative side in those negative games i wasn't just like minus you know one to five you know percent or whatever i was like in the negative teens or 20s that i think it, this actually makes a lot of sense like i was feeding more or less so um, much more in line with what I'd actually expect in the uh, records based on contribution. To This is the kind of correlation I would expect, uh, not what I have been getting for the past three or four months. Uh, damage statistics. Uh, down across the board, but not necessarily bad. So uh, if you the average damage done to champions, this is includes all games, including support games. I was down almost a percent and a half from last month's uh, almost 23%, which was pretty high for me. And I was down about 1.4% if you take the support games out of that. So uh, down across the board. Uh, a lot of that was probably due to me dying that month, dying a lot. So that uh, makes a lot of sense. Not, nothing too strange to be seen there. Gold statistics, for the most part, are down, as you could have figured from the uh, GPM that we saw earlier. This just details uh, some more specific um, role, uh, like role specific gold totals. Uh, I actually had a like a good income f as the support, and like I mostly say that like per minute, because my support games tended to be short. Like if you look at the total gold, like I averaged like 8,600 gold a game versus 9,600 gold a game last month. But my gold per minute was 275 last month, and it's 290 this month. So not a good number still. However, um, it is better than last month, while my opponent's support gold also went up. So I, I'm, I am like trying to keep up. It's still not good, though. So 
I, I have this green, it really should just be yellow, meaning I'm doing par for the course. And all of these are pretty much down across the board. Not not like extreme amounts, but opponent gold is up, mine down. So uh, moving on to champion specific statistics. Uh, last month my most played was LeBlanc, and I had uh, some pretty bonkers numbers on her, actually. Uh, this month it was still LeBlanc, but... Um, I actually had like 10 games on Cassiopeia because I really started, you know, pounding her toward the end of the month. So, um, I think next month you'll see that I've played her a lot and I'll explain a little bit about that in just a second. But my average CS per minute was up, which is good. Um, my KDA was slightly down. Uh, average enemy CS was significantly down. So this should actually be green, not red. Because uh, I reduced, you know, I took 20 CS per game off of my enemy. So that's really, really good for me. Uh, I got a lot of lane influence. Like, there was a lot of action in mid lane, both for and against. That's what this says. Lane effectiveness. I wasn't nearly as dominant uh, in terms of, like, kills, but I did a much better job zoning. So this number could be skewed a little bit. Roaming grade was higher. We discussed this a little bit earlier about how I was just more efficient with my roaming. Goal per minute totals up. Um, 30 20 game length is actually pretty short compared to like my average game length, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, percent of da uh, percentage of damage was very, very high for LeBlanc. Like, actually, that was almost, almost a full 3% higher than it was last month and that's really good because assassin champions typically don't have high total damages they have um it's just all at once so if you go to like the post game screen and see like you know percentage of damage done to champions it might only be uh, like twenty thousand versus your ad carry is only thirty five thousand or whatever so assassins tend to not have a high total for this so this shows that i'm contributing and doing a lot of aoe damage and just generally contributing very positively in fights and getting a lot of damage out there before I die. Net contribution grade was a negative, which was kind of odd considering everything else was positive, but um, that's that for the most played champion. Uh, champions played, I played 24 champions this month. I only played 17 last month. Uh, there have been two patches, two major patches, patch 4.10 and patch 4.11, were both um, within the uh, limits of the June statistics you're seeing here. <clears throat> and in those in those two patches, my champion pool, um, mostly LeBlanc, uh, received s not significant but you know relevant nerfs and changes uh, with the LeBlanc Q silence change. Uh, and Ziggs actually had his bombs changed too, so I've I've been shying away from him. Although I think he's still pretty good, but uh, the last like week of June, I didn't really play him that much. So, uh, and uh, I. Because of that, I've been trying to experiment and mix in some new champions that I wasn't quite, you know, that I'm I'm still trying to discover, you know, what it's going to be for, you know, the next couple of patches. So that explains this number just a little bit. Um, once again, I duo queued quite a bit this month, but had a positive record of 18 and 15. That's a lot of duo queue for me. Uh, I've just been doing it a lot more recently. Uh, just with like five my people from my 5v5 team. Um, mostly with my AD carry, who is sufficient in other roles too. So, uh, mass time, yeah, match time statistics. Uh, average match time was down about 45 seconds. Not that big a deal. It happens from time to time. Uh, not too many outliers for shortest and longest. Roughly the same. What is interesting, though, is there was a pretty much a, a an even distribution across all the game lengths last month. Besides, like the twenty to twenty five minute, which I was five and zero, oh, which is pretty crazy. But so for the most part, other than that, like it was a pretty standard um, split. Like everything was everything was evenly divided amongst all the game times. This month, I was very good in some places and very bad in the others. So in the short games, opposite of last month, I was two and five. I had a terrible record in the twenty to twenty-five minute um, games. 
uh, I had a great record in the 25 to 30 minute range, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it, maybe that hints towards uh, historically, I've always been a pretty good like mid to late game player, like especially late game. I usually win, but or at least I feel very good. Uh, the 25 to 30 minute, this could be affected by the champions I was playing, uh, being very mid, uh, mid game centric, but it's very strange that I have a, such a positive record there and such a negative record, you know, five minutes earlier. Uh, and then other than that, uh, I've lost a, a lot of 45 minute plus games. That was pretty tough, but I think this is, this is an interesting observation that I'm going to have to look forward and see if it, uh continues that way or not that, that could be based on the patch too uh pick order statistics average pick order i was actually picking later this month on average um there historically there hasn't been that big of a deviation in this number it's almost always been like you know maybe 0 0.05 difference like worth of deviation from month to month there was a uh, this is 0.14 so that's like kind of a bigger deal than it seems like uh it means that i generally speaking i've been picking like later you can see the the majority of my games this month i was picking fourth so uh not too bad a wreck third pick i was bad record but like this doesn't really tell too much um this is mostly for me to track like over the course of the full season uh, matchup specific statistics. Oof. So, I was one and four against Lulu, and this is a matchup that I struggle with quite a bit. Uh, I tend to struggle with lame bullies, and Lulu is the bulliest of them all right now. Um, I just don't. Or Oriana is like the best matchup I have against her, like Oriana or Ziggs, and in a lot of the games against Lulu, I did not get to play that. Uh, either of those champions, as we'll look into. Oriana 2 and 3, Twisted Fate 1 and 3. I've been banning Twisted Fate on the more recent patch. Um, I do very well against Ziggs. It helps being a Ziggs player. And uh, Caitlyn at AD Carry. I saw Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn Morgana quite a bit this month. And I actually saw some Lux this month, which is kind of weird. Uh, so I highlighted the strongest matchup was against Lux. Uh... More or less, I outfarmed by a lot, which is something that I wasn't doing in any other matchup really this month. But against Lux, I was you know almost a full CS ahead per minute. Uh, so all these matchups, you know, no surprise. The weakest matchup I did want to talk about for a second. Um, the weakest matchup last month was Yasuo. Still a terrible matchup, by the way. I'm gonna, you know, hopefully that doesn't come back because he's getting banned now. But I wanted to discuss this Lulu matchup just a little bit. I've died. I'm dying 6.33 times a game against Lulu, and I know for a fact a couple of those per game have been in lane or from ganks. Now it's really easy for a jungler to gank a Lulu lane. There's so many tools at her disposal to just guarantee the kill or make it very difficult for you to escape. Um, she's got the CC. She's got this W, the polymorph CC. She also has a slow. And she can put picks on you so that even if you, you know, not gap close, but gap escape, like get away with a, like a flash or something, the picks can still leave. Uh, if she's like still walking, she can she can still queue and get the glitter lance on you for picks. So uh, average CS per minute, the Lulu player is just destroying me every time. Uh, I'm having a positive net contribution score, but as you can see, the lane effect in this is abysmal. And, uh, yeah, I don't, like, I've played all these different matchups, and none of them are really working. The Syndra game, I remember specifically, the one win I had, um, I had really good jungle help. I had a really good Lee Sin on my team. So, that's a matchup. The Lulu and Yasuo are the ones I want to look at in particular for the mid lane. Although, I think Assassins are going to be coming back again, so I'm, I'm going to make a guess already that next month it's going to be Fizz. So we'll see if that holds true. Uh, I did play one summoner in back-to-back -back games, actually. Like, they were literally back-to-back -back games. Um, I beat him both times. It was this Angel Angel Solar XD. Um, I crushed his Morgana support, and then I played Cassiope against his Rise top and just, like, 
made this guy have a miserable day. So that's two months in a row that I've had multi-game summoners. I don't know if that's just a rating situation or what, but uh, moving on. Situational statistics. I didn't have nearly as many first bloods this month, and I think it's because I played a lot less LeBlanc than I did last month. Um, like, completely. Like, last month I had eight first bloods and four first blood assists. This month I only had four first bloods and no assists. So, um, I had four first bloods against, um, three first blood assists against, meaning that I had something to do with the first blood against my teammate. Uh, record when giving up first blood. This was an interesting stat here. Um, I'm four and zero oh when I give up first blood. Now I don't know if that's like counter tilting. Like that's I don't know if that's me like psychologically prepping myself and like buckling down and saying like, hey, it's time to quit messing around and and focus but i thought that was interesting that's like almost never the case so also does show how little first blood actually matters but they did change that in 4.11 so we'll see if um those changes change according to that or not of course we'll need more data positional statistics um i went 30 and 22 in mid lane which is my main uh, cs was roughly the same but down overall compared to last month. Uh, I'm killing, I'm getting a lot more kills, but I'm also dying slightly more. So my KDA did go up by 0.1, so that's good. My lane effectiveness average is up. Um, a lot more outside lane influence, both for and against this month compared to last month. Uh, my roaming grade we already discussed was almost three times as good as it was last month. Um, um, all of the first bloods against were from mid lane, meaning um, a lot of times they're from ganks or from just misplays on my part. So, um, AD carry I only played two games, so I don't want to discuss that too much. Support I did want to talk top. I went two hours, only two games though. But I wanted to discuss support and jungle in particular. So we'll do support first. If you just look like at all the red, my numbers across the board are down from last month. Like, almost entirely, except for KDA, which at this point, like, it didn't even matter that much, honestly. So, across the board, I had a 6-10 and 10 record. Um, enemy AD carry is CSing at a much higher clip. Uh, my AD carry is not. It's just it's just bad, and I think... Uh, I, I have, a, I have uh, one of my goals for next month to touch on this, so we'll get back to this later. Another one I wanted to touch on was jungle. I was 0-5 out of the jungle. Three of these games were on Evelyn. One was on... Carthus and another one. I'm trying to remember who the last one was. Might have been Dr. Mundo. But just like just awful numbers across the board. Like I don't I don't really need to say too much more there. Um uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk more about these positional st or these positional statistics more at the end because I have two goals that are oriented toward them for next month. Uh, environmental statistics, nothing too crazy here. I went 16-7 in my night block, which is like, you know, my prime time. Oh, when I, the night block is when I would like to be playing the most. It's not always when I get the chance to play the most, obviously, as you can see here. But I would like to be playing at night because I've always performed better at night. Um, day of the week, nothing too crazy. Music, nothing too crazy. So, um, I want to talk briefly about the goals I had from April and May. So last month, my support play was significantly worse than it was in March. And I, I told myself, I was like, I need to improve my support play, even though I'm playing it less. And I completely failed this goal. So I had poor numbers across the board. We already discussed it. Like I, I just completely failed this one. Um, my second goal from, from uh, April, May into this month was to add a top laner to my repertoire so that I could, um, you know, have a have a go to pick there, uh, if, whenever I need to play top. Usually, with a couple games a month, and um, top lane, I'm I'm confident playing Rise or um, who did I play? Rise and Doctor Mundo, who's actually pretty good right now. But I only had to play two top games this month, and one of them was on cast. So it's kind of uh, oh, and Lulu, I can play Lulu too. So the top, this isn't as much geared at the top laner anymore. But the jungle, it definitely is. I didn't add any of these. There were I did play some normal games trying to add Lee Sin, but it just did not go well, and I'm not comfortable. And um, 
while I think Evelyn is close enough to a meta pick, I'm I haven't won a game yet with her this season. Even though I feel comfortable on her and I think I just need to add more of a playmaker. Like I don't know whether that's gonna be Maokai with the new changes. It might just be Maokai. I don't know. So I failed this one. Uh play more games was my third goal, which I absolutely did. And so I I, I got one out of my three goals for April and May, April and May, which is not good. You want to be getting all three because uh, uh, you you know you want to set the goals and you want to achieve them. So for next month, the goal is three out of three and the bonus. So I want to get all every goal and I want to improve and I want to get the diamond next season or next uh, next session. So uh, my goals for next month: uh, my, reduce my negative contribution score. This is a goal that I've had before, but I like to bring it back whenever I have like a bad month or two in a row to just be more conscious of how my deaths and my negative contributions can affect my teammates and affect my total um, contribution to a game. So for the most part, this is done primarily through, you know, fewer deaths. That's like the, you know, the easiest way to do this is to just die less and contribute more in positive ways. So the easiest way is to just die less. And a lot of these deaths were careless, like one-on-one -on -one lane deaths that just should not have happened. Um, Goal number two, support play needs to improve again. Uh, I've played a couple games on Nami this month. I also played my first Thresh game. Uh, I feel confident on Nami. I actually think she's going to become a new standard for me when um, when I do have to support. I think she fits really well into the meta. And I think once, uh, if I'm comfortable with the lane matchup, then I think she's going to be my new go-to. I think she's just more powerful than certain other champions that I play there now. And uh, goal number three is to refocus on improving my farm numbers. So I've been roaming less, but I've been more efficient with roaming. I now need to combine that with my refocus on farming and just com and last hitting. Because the most consistent way to get to get your gold numbers up is to just have higher CS per minute. Like CS per minute is like the 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 main number, I'm, the main statistic I want to focus on. So um, you could really reword this to have a higher CS per minute next month. Because it was pretty low for this month. So I think that's actually very reasonable. I just need to actually concentrate on it. And my bonus goal is to go from Plat 1 to Diamond. Spoiler alert, I'm Plat 1 already. So that's going to be it for this month. I thank you guys for watching. Uh, you can find all this, all these statistics and data uh, on my blog, uh, which is gelati, lol .blogspot.com. You should you can follow me on Twitter at gelati lol. Uh, on Twitter I tweet everything from esports stuff uh, like pro game predictions to um, notifications when I'm gonna go live for live streams and just like general like it's the easiest way to get in, in touch with me and contact me and everything. You can have me in game at mid space gelati and I encourage you guys to check out the YouTube and. Add me up in game and follow the stream. The stream is twitch.tv slash gelati lol. Until next time, until next time, enjoy.